Guys, welcome back to Rodder's Garage. I made those bungs a couple weeks ago, those mounting bungs. They're still sitting over here on the belt sander, ready to go for mounting our body down. We're gonna get going on this thing tonight. So let's get something done here. I figure tonight what we're gonna do is go ahead and I'm gonna get the glass out of here and strip any unneeded junk out of here. There's some wiring remaining. The wiring I put in, we'll get rid of that stuff. Like I said, get the glass out, any uh, trim molding, garnish molding, probably take this back panel out of here. Get this thing stripped out and start getting it ready for these floor braces or the floor structure. Over here on the side too, you can see that the nails are all gone out of our quarter panel. We'll pop this off, <sighs> drill these holes a little bigger here, clean up inside the jam, push this together. Let's get those all plug welded too and basically start tying this thing together. If we can get it all stripped out, probably pull the steering wheel right away too, just to give me a little more room when I'm working in here because once we get it all stripped out, I'm gonna weld the door shut. We're gonna force these things up into place like that, get our body lines lined up like that and weld the door shut for now and I'll have to climb in through the deck lid five or six thousand times while we're doing all the floor structure in this thing. The other thing too is before I weld the door shut, we'll go ahead and come down in here and cut out any of this garbage that we're not going to need anymore. Basically, the way I'm going to do it is inch and a half by one tubing is going to be our framing section and usually on the Model A it works out really nice. I've done a few where you put the tubing inch tall, inch and a half wide, you can slide it right under this piece here. So the tubing butts up to this outer edge, trim everything off on the inside of that. And usually when you run the bar straight across after that, the body actually is the perfect height off the chassis, almost like a stock height on it. So that's what we're gonna do here too. So we'll go ahead and trim a bunch of that stuff out. Probably should put a few welds in some places too before the doors get welded shut like up here where the rivet down in there is pulled loose. So go ahead and start stripping that other stuff first and then we'll see what we can accomplish tonight. Yeah, not much left of that one. Ow. Start cutting some tubing.
reach the power button. Yep. Perfect. So at this point, I got that bar taken out that was holding the body up. We are exactly the same off this structure up to the dashboard, both sides as well as the header panel up top. And I got some pretty good welds going on on both of those pieces of iron. So we are locked front to back the same distance on each side to locations on the chassis. We are locked side to side centered and our height is good. So now that's basically a really good starting point. I mean, we're pretty much set there. Now we're gonna come back to this point and check for that squareness I was talking about and get some pieces cut to go from this frame to pretty much right here where the door, door pillar is. Five inches on the head there. Oh, we're not too far off. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, Spot on 41 and 3 sixteenths. Our height is good here too. We can cut some pieces now, get them in there. I'd say we're doing pretty good. Not too bad.
tonight. So as you guys can tell, I got all of that stuff butchered back out of here. That old gutter that was all mutilated in here. I pretty much cut off the nuts on the backside where all that stuff was bolted together. These two were rivets here for the bracket. I'm pretty sure that was a, pretty much a rumble seat bracket. These things here or some type of hinge bracket. I didn't want to destroy those. I might as well save that stuff. It's nice to keep the old brackets. Maybe someone needs them one day. I probably won't because I'm going to build whatever I need here. So we got all that stuff cleaned up out of here. After I did that, uh, I also came up here and removed the front piece. Might as well get that out of the way so we can blast everything in between all the areas when it comes time for sandblasting. I finished up by cutting off the remnants of the bumper brackets and all that stuff that I didn't get when we first started taking this thing apart. So everything's cleaned up in the back and I did cut two pieces of tubing and grind off that mill coat again. They're gonna take us from our framing up at the rocker panel all the way back to the corner over here. I already got a miter cut on it. It's more of a crown and that's gonna fit tight in the corner of the quarter panel here. I got a couple other bars here at a half inch square tube. So as you can see, these here are the exact width of the tail pan. I had Joe measure his car, that one that was out on the ice track. And that is exactly where those go into place. So I'm gonna put one there for now and one up a little bit higher to set that into place. And we'll tack those in before we start welding cross members sideways between these rails. So. Yeah, I'm going to get these tacked in and we'll measure, make sure, verify the height on those weld bungs for the back. Get those whipped up and it won't be long before this is all tied together. not all right so we're definitely gonna have one here across the back obviously we want one at the rear when we make our tail pan it can roll down come underneath to get spot welded to the bottom side plus you just want that extra strength here at the back we can also catch these returns here where the drip rails are going to get bolted on and weld off to those as well so it's just extra strength all the way around we are uh, 39 and 3 eighths we're also going to put a couple of short pieces right here just angling out to connect to this outer frame from here to here just to kind of finish that off nicely we might even come back a little further like this and just kind of blend it into that so we'll cut two short stubs and then mark it inside the car and then hand cut it with the cutoff wheel afterwards so 39 and 3 eighths and two i don't know Six inch pieces, eight inch pieces, we'll go eight. Two eighths and a 39 and three eighths.
so that is going to be what we're working with here for framing in the back. That's pretty much going to be it. We got our one at the back, obviously, the two front and back for making our cap over the cross member, and that should be more than enough strength in the tail end of this car. Maybe, possibly, maybe I'll put one or two here, just in case you get rear-ended or something. It doesn't fold up as bad, or if you back into something, you don't totally crush it. Maybe put one, uh, one or two, maybe we'll do the diagonal deal here at the back, just to provide a little extra support in the tail pan section, seeing that the frame doesn't come all the way to the back of the car. And also, I'm probably not gonna run a bumper on this thing, it's just gonna be basically what you see here. So, yeah, maybe we'll add a couple there. Other than that, this section's gonna be good. Got everything welded here on my angles coming in, and nothing moved at all when I unclamped it. So we're looking good, everything should be squared out yet. I did ver verify my side-to-side -side distance to these old bumper mounting holes, and we are spot on 100% at the back. Therefore, we should be square all the way up. It would have been nice to get these two rear body bolts in, but we'll do that after it comes off. It's gonna be a lot easier for me to drill those, and we'll just tack the crush sleeves into place. When I throw it back on after sandblasting, just verify that the bolts go in nice and easy to these taller bungs in the back and we should be good to go. That's another thing I did too. You might notice there's some black spray paint there. I wanted to just basically trace out the circle where that pad is sitting on the bottom of the tubing. And instead of trying to weasel a marker up in there over this cross member, I just used the old spray paint trick and just gave it a dusting all the way around. So when I pull the body off, I should have a nice perfect circle where those bungs are lined up. So basically I can just dead center my bore coming up through the tubing off of that and get my crush sleeve centered out on that section. So at this point, yeah, I think we're gonna run those two in there and then I'm gonna jump up front here and we're gonna do two more, just two more braces up front angled in here, probably mimicking the angle of the wishbones on the bottom, but maybe not quite out that far, maybe just in a little bit, but at that same angle. So I started keeping this tally on the passenger door over here, how many times I had to get in and out to do this floor structure. To be honest with you, I thought it was gonna be a lot more times than that. Yeah, only 12 times. Surprising. We had a little bit of spring on the door when I cut it, but the door actually needs a bunch of repair on the bottom. I'm guessing there's a little bit of a twist in it. If I push on it, it closes fairly nice, but the main thing here is check this out. Body line is perfect, which is exactly what we were going for by welding the door shut before we welded the floor structure in. So yeah, we're right on the money with that one. Both sides. Line right up.
Well guys, today is gonna be the big day. I'm gonna finally get the body off the Model A. Came in this morning, stripped a few more small parts. And also, as you can see, I took all the wood out of the car, almost all of it. I left the upper part in the pillar. I'll probably leave this, probably leave it the whole time actually, just leave that right in there. The rest of it came out. Everything was pretty rotten, it all fell out pretty easily and I just figured why not go ahead and just take it all out of here. If I feel like it, maybe I'll do it all in steel again. I really doubt I'll do wood in the thing again, but all that's out of the way and that's good because now when I sandblast it, I can get behind where the wood normally would have been. And with the floor being welded in now, everything's very, very stout and tied together, the whole thing. It's pretty nice. We'll verify squareness again before we start putting floor pans in and adding our braces at the pillars. But at this point, oh, I gotta take this out. Yeah, too, I forgot about that. I'll have to heat this bottom screw here on this regulator, drop that. I do have the door latches out, the door handles off the outside of the car on both sides. And pretty much every single piece of trim and all that good stuff's out of the way. The straps out here to hold the material, those are gone and off. I also took some trim off up here and let's see what else i don't know i pulled i pulled the e-brake off already the handle and i got the linkages off the brake pedal and the clutch already so basically what's left here is i have to pull i'm gonna pull the top of the transmission off the whole shifter tower here we'll just pop these bolts pull that off and we can look in the trans too and see how that is inside i'm gonna go ahead and push this pin out here on the shaft drop the clutch and brake pedal and then we're gonna come up front here and pull the steering and all that's basically just to make the body come off easier so we don't have to lift it way up over that stuff. So the steering, that's another thing too. Gotta to pull the starter to get the box inboard. That's no big deal at all. The pitman arm is welded on, as you can see. Very crudely welded on on the back. So I have to grind that off and see if I can get the arm off the thing so we can get the box and column out of the car. And that's pretty much gonna be it when those couple things are done. I'll unbolt this body, we're gonna get it off. I'll probably flip it over on its side on the floor over here right away and we'll really quickly weld up the rest of the seams on the bottom of the framing. And then this thing is ready to get put on the trailer and sent out for sandblasting. After that we can focus on the frame a little bit, but let's finish up these last few things. Basically, this was pretty much the last month of me working on other people's stuff and working on this thing a couple hours at a crack every night. Got a lot done. I mean, all the stuff's trimmed out. We got the framing in. Yeah, we're gonna add a lot more bracing once everything's sandblasted, but we're pretty much ready to take this thing out, put it on the trailer, and go sandblast it at the house. However, uh, it's really wet and muddy outside, so it's probably gonna be a couple of weeks before we get out and go, go take care of that. We got a couple other small parts we're gonna sandblast when we do the body too. We got the brake pedals, a bunch of trim stuff, and, and uh, we're probably gonna wait on the fenders and stuff that are up there yet 
Whoops, dropped my safety glasses. Probably gonna wait on all the other body stuff. We're just gonna focus on this for now. And also, seeing that it's muddy out and it's gonna be a little bit before I get the sandblast this, I'm gonna go ahead and start blowing the chassis apart here next week. That, taking that apart should only take one night, a uh, couple hours, and this thing should be totally disassembled. And then we can start going through and looking at some other stuff too. We'll get the engine on a stand. We'll save that for another night, put the engine on a stand and tear it down and see how badly I screwed that up by starting it without, I don't know, without taking it apart or looking at it at all. But we'll be able to do that. We can focus uh, on fixing up the radiator or I'm not sure yet on that. It's gouged pretty bad here. I don't think it's gonna hold water anyway, but we can look at that and brakes. We're gonna have to look into brakes and see what we're gonna have to order basically for the chassis to get everything back up and in tip top shape before, you know, before everything's all done and finalized. So. Basically, we can blow that apart. We'll also take the chassis to the house, probably the chassis and the wishbones, uh, front axle we can take, and rear axle, we'll probably leave that. We'll probably just wire wheel that, I'm not sure. Definitely gonna go through it, rebuild it. Um, maybe we'll pull it all apart and sandblast the case. Maybe that's the way to go on that too. So yeah, we got next week to take that apart and we can add it to the pile of stuff to sandblast when the body goes back to the house. So that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Till next time.